Hey guys, it's Dom, I'm back, and this is a different type of video. One of the things I've been doing a lot of recently is 3D printing. You've seen uh, a couple of my videos before. One of the printers I've gotten, and I haven't gotten around to reviewing yet for a couple of reasons, is this. This is the Monoprice Mini Delta. It is a 160-ish pound Delta-style 3D printer. It's obviously very small that I can hold it in one hand. One of the things I really don't like about it, however, is the build surface. So it comes with a fake build tack like sheet. Mine ripped almost instantly. Then I've obviously tried the usual stuff, the, uh, the masking tape, the uh, sheet of glass, the, I've tried all of that. And that's when I got contacted by a company called, uh, well, you can see them, Wham Bam. So, they make the Wham Bam Flexible Build Surface. Now, what is the Wham Bam Flexible Build Surface? It is really quite simple. It is a high temperature magnetic sheet that sticks to the heated bed and a spring steel plate that, well, goes on top of the magnet. You can have as many of these sheets as you want with different print surfaces. So the one they ship is PEX. We don't know what the X is in PEX. I assume it's somewhat similar to PEI, but we, we really don't know. Um, so yeah, you can have a sheet with PEX, you can have a sheet with Biltec, you can have a sheet with PEI, uh, and they all just snap on. So this video is installing the Wham Bam Flexible Build Surface on the Mini Delta. Let's go. So guys, this is most of the unit so it looks a little bit different I took the heated bed out of the printer because it is such a small printer it's a real pain in the ass to get in so you t I took the six screws off the bottom uh, and unclipped the power and thermistor cables and just pulled it out and uh, whilst I'm here I wanted to show something which is always annoyed me about the mini delta which is just how poor the Mini Delta heats up the build plate. And now that I've taken it off, I understand why. Look how small this heating element is. It barely covers the center of the printer. So this is a 120, 110 millimeter diameter build plate. This is, this heating element is minuscule. No wonder it struggles to hit and maintain 60 degrees whilst printing. So put this to the side for a second, you will see the three items here. This is the uh, Wham Bam spring steel sheet. Now see it doesn't look or it actually isn't all that flexible mainly because of how small it is. The the larger a piece of metal is the and the same thickness obviously the the easier it is to bend. This is a really small sheet of spring steel which obviously makes it a little bit harder. This is the magnetic sheet that goes on the bed. It's got the pre applied uh, 3M adhesive on the back and obviously it's got the lovely Wham Bam uh, logo here. And last but not least we have the Wham Bam PEX sheet. Was that gonna... look at that. So yeah, this is the, the Wham Bam PEX sheet that goes on top of the spring steel. Uh, goes on top of the spring steel and gives you that perfect adhesion. And then you throw, or you don't throw, you carefully place the spring steel on the magnet. And now you have a magnetic build surface. So I'm going to put this to the side for the moment. And I'm actually going to clean this monstrosity. So I took the Biltac surface off of mine uh, and you can't really see it right now because it's actually quite clear. It is a, a Peopoli build surface and it is somewhat clear but it is also a real pain to get off. And as you can see it's leaving behind all sorts of lovely residue for me to clean. So obviously there is the, the sheet I cut. And now the first step of the instructions is to remove all dirt, grime, debris, all that lovely stuff 
from the bed. So I'm going to use some white spirit because I have no isopropyl alcohol at the moment. And then I will get back to you guys. All right guys, so I am back. I've cleaned the uh, residue from the glue off of the build plate. It's nice and clean. It may not look it, but it is also just a mess at this point. So the next thing uh, Wham Bam asks you to do is get a good quality steel ruler and check the, uh, the bed for flatness. So uh, I'm going to do that off camera because you have to be at eye level and it's really hard to do uh, behind the camera, especially when you're behind a tripod behind the camera. So it actually turns out my bed is not completely flat, which probably does uh, go give some credit as to why my prints have had uneven bases though that does mean we get to use um, something that is not usually shown in wham bam videos and it is these these are aluminium shims that go on top of the bed but beneath the magnet to increase flatness so i'm going to cut these down to small pieces to where I'm having the issue um, and then recheck with the ruler until it is as flat as it can possibly be uh, and I will be back. So you've applied your shims and now you get to do kind of the fun bit. You have to attach the magnet to the base. So one of the instructions is uh, do a dry fit to make sure it actually fits. It's not hanging over the edges or anything like that. And as you can see, mine goes right to the edges and well, that's good, that's what you want. Uh, I'm going to quickly run back to the printer to test fit so I know which way is front. I believe on my one it's this way, but I could be wrong. So uh, before I stick mine down, I'm going to do that test. So I'm back and I, <laughs> I did double check. So I do want the, the wham bam facing this way. So according to the instructions, you should peel back about an inch or 20 millimeters to start sticking it down. Now that might be fine for the larger uh, build surfaces, but as you can see, the, uh, the, print, the print bed here is really small. So like 20 millimeters would be about a third of the, <laughs> of the entire build surface. So I'm going to turn it over Again, make sure I've got the right uh, orientation for my printer. And this is where having longer nails than I do would come in handy. I recently cut them and I cut them a bit short. There we go. So I'm going to peel off about this much. Obviously not a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. I just don't want to stick too much down and then not be able to move it. So. Again, I'm going to line up at the bottom first, making sure that the flap is obviously not going to interfere. And then I'm going to press down and realize I'm biased to one side a little bit. As you can see, it's a lot more pronounced in the video than it is in real life but again because I only stuck a tiny bit down it is a lot easier than it would have been had I stuck the full 20 millimeters so again I am going to try to line this up without biasing it to one side or another and I think I think we are, yes, we are good there. So now I can go in from underneath and peel some more of the paper back. And I'm uh, putting pressure through the center and then out from the center outwards to stick it down. You don't want to go from out to in because you might trap air bubbles. And there we go. So you can see even try as I might, I did bias against this side a little bit. Not the end of the world, slightly annoying, but again, not the end of the world. So now we can line up the spring steel. Ta da! Um, and if you, for some reason, just wanted to print directly onto spring steel, you're now done. But we, uh, we're not doing that. We got the flexible build surface. 
So we're going to put the PEX sheet on. So I'm going to move this assembly out of the way and we can work on this. So moved all that out of the way, the first thing I have to do is clean this because as you can see, I've not been uh, careful and it just covered in oil and fingerprints. Uh, even if you had been super careful, it's always just good practice to clean it anyway. So again, I'm going to use some white spirits with some paper towels. They do recommend you use uh, isopropyl alcohol. I don't have any, um, they say any high percentage alcohol will do. So uh, like surgical spirits, again, I don't have any of that right now. So I'm going to quickly clean this off camera and then we will in, uh, install the PEX sheet. So we're back and as you may or may not notice, if you're not, you obviously might be colorblind to the color blue. I am wearing uh, some nitrile gloves. The simple reason as to why I'm wearing nitrile gloves is uh, I just produce a lot of skin oils, um, as disgusting as that is. Um, and I've cleaned this three times. And uh, whenever I'm moving, I always just get like a big thumbprint or something on there. So I thought the easiest way to negate that is to just not be able to put any of my fingerprints on there. So how do we how do we do this? Well, it's actually incredibly similar to how we did this. We're going to peel back the uh, the top section a little bit, and then we're going to um, lay it down make sure it's not biased to either side or as much as possible uh, and then go down the middle and then press out to the side so let's try and do this and I am suddenly realizing uh, it would have been really useful for me to have picked a corner off of off of the the backing before I put my gloves on so I'm gonna try and do the same procedure Make sure I am as as much as is humanly possible, um, not biased to either side. Um, and as you can see, that clearly was not the case. Uh, so the benefit, and there there aren't many. The, the benefit of it being so small is that you can actually just hold it edge edge to edge and help align it that way. So, uh, what I might actually do is use uh, an old credit card style. So I think I have a, I have an old Oyster card, which is a, a London transport uh, card to help put some of it down. Again, so center. Really want to get as as much as you can. And again, it's actually really not that hard. It's kind of monotonous and boring, but it isn't really hard, which is good because you really want as many people as possible using systems like these because it really does just improve your 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 printing experience anyone that's used uh the the Prusa the the Prusa i3 uh, Mark 3 Mark 3S Mark 2.5 whatever that they know this firsthand people that have um picked up the the later ender threes with their their c mag beds they know and obviously the the people that have wham bam systems know that not having to be restricted to where where your printer is is actually really useful and i almost uh, went from the outside in, which is, as we know, a big no-no. And now just last little bit, I'm gonna try and pull it out and press down at the same time. Brilliant. 
All right, so last but not least for this bit, there is actually a protective layer on top that I can now peel off. So if I zoom in, you will be able to see there are micro pockets down here and um, try as I might, there it's almost impossible for me to get them all out. Uh, also, uh, some of these will go once the bed is heated. So, we have now done this part of the assembly. So something else that you get in your kit is this. This is uh, either double or triple zero steel wool and uh, it might hurt you to do this but after you've done all that you've actually got to scuff it up. So the reason for it is this is well an incredibly smooth surface duh. but you need to kind of create micro scratches so so when they're the 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 plastic is hot it kind of seeps into those a little bit not enough to like reduce the the first layer but uh, enough to give it some insane adhesion so you're going to want to scuff it up with the steel wool and then uh, clean it with some isopropyl and um, again I'm going to use white spirit because I don't but you just want to give it a, a good key if you don't have for whatever reason um, steel wool in your pack 400 grit sandpaper will work just as well, they say. So you're just keying it up and this is absolutely heartbreaking <laughs> as someone who's just done all this. Uh, I would really rather not have to do all this, but... And again, I'm just going to put a as, as little as possible amount of... tiny little drop of methylated spirits and now I'm going to use a different part of the steel wool and just scuff it up god this is absolutely heartbreaking <laughs> and then just use a paper towel to clean the steel wool fragments from the bed. And now guys, you are done. If like me you took the build plate off, you will then have to obviously reattach the build plate to the printer. But now, ta-da! And then obviously try not to touch the PEX itself, it's got a little tab. You pull up the tab and then you're good to go. And like I said, you can have as many of these build uh, steel sheets as you want. You can have as many different build surfaces on them as you want. I believe Wham Bam themselves are working on a PEI sheet and maybe something else, who knows. But uh, I wanted to shout out Wham Bam Systems for sending me this plate. They're not sponsoring this video, but I am a beta tester for the Mini Delta. So I will be putting it through its paces. This was just the installation video. So I'm finally done. As you can see, I have also changed shirts because parrots are amazing. But as you can now see on here, this is my mini Delta and this is the Wham Bam sheet. It just sticks on and that's it. The magnets are strong, they're not gonna go like that. But as you can see, this printer is small enough I can hold it in one hand and just take it off. I now have a Wham Bam flexible shirt Flexible build surface on my Monoprice Mini Delta. Well, maybe you should get one too. <laughs>